In this session, we discuss producing and directing and paragliding through life. Strangely enough, when I was in America, I wasn't teaching geography. <laughs> you were teaching theatre? No, I was talking, uh, I was teaching a subject called intercultural communication. Okay, all right, yeah. How people can communicate across cultures is something which we have to learn how to. Yes. And become good at. And in America, which is a land of immigrants, obviously. Of course, yeah. yeah? So they have had centuries to work on that. So there mm. is a blend. And they all have agreed that English will be the kind of the lingua franca. Everybody learns English, but you can still have your own mother tongue. So there are Spanish speakers, there are Portuguese speakers, and there are all these various Chinese speakers to be able to go oh, to yeah. certain parts yes, of California. Yes, yes, yeah. Chinese is the operational language, especially in the LA area. So, to answer your question, I did intercultural management and that became um, an extension of my master's work. Oh, I see. Which I did in Vermont. And so even in Southern California, it was uh, intercultural communication? It was intercultural stuff. communication, global studies. It was so, more at the international level. Yeah. And this is where my background in geography and understanding that the world is one habitat. Every pupil in school is asked the question at different stages, you know, different times. Always the same question. So what are you going to become when you grow up, <laughs> when you leave school? And doctor, la, engineer, la, this, la, that, la. I always said that I don't know an Akinamara. Mm. But that's the honest answer. I don't know. There can be so many possibilities. I haven't worked it out. If I say now, I may be lying. Later on, if I say now I want to be a bank manager and then I end up being something else, then I have failed. What do people want? You know, what, any citizens of any country, what would they want? And this was, we are talking about the 60s, we have just got independent. And so this idea of being Malayan was just a new concept. Mm. Then Malaysia was born, mm. the idea of being Malaysian is still a concept. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that became this, my, my postgraduate interest, which I turned into a master's thesis using Malaysia as a subject area. Global studies, looking at, at the whole planet as one home place, one habitat. And now only in this last decade or so, with more and more global issues that if the wind was to blow, it just doesn't blow into one country, it blows into the entire region. You've got to look at it in total concept. But that's what my subject was, which I learned for all these years. Mm. That the world is one habitat. It has 75%, believe it or not, water bodies, oceans. And land is only about, at best, one third. And of the one third, take half of it away which cannot be lived in because it's either too hot, it's too dry, or it's too cold, or icy, or too mountainous. Ask a geographer, will tell you all these answers very straightforwardly. And so the habitable land is what people fight for. And if you look into all the reasons for war, it's mainly over land. Possession of what the land can give, the, the fertile part of the land. They don't fight over rocky mountains which nobody can live in. No idea that there are so many different people. They only thought they were black and white. They were already taken care of the red skin. Almost annihilated them or sent them into little pockets where they will all die. Like Carson City and you know, some in places like Nevada and the deserts and all that. Okay, back to where, what did I teach where? And did you enjoy teaching? I enjoyed teaching simply because I, I just felt it in my blood. I had no, no plan B. I gravitated into it. In fact, when I went into the university after my sixth form, um, this is the final year. The, the headmaster, the principal of the school, Mr. Tirith Ram, became like my second father. He, because of my theater 
activities. He was an actor himself. He's also from the ECS. He had played roles like Brutus and so forth. So he saw me as an extension of him. And he would be like very formal in front of people, but besides that, he would come and put my hand over my shoulder and say something like he was talk to his own son. So we had that relationship. So he told me when I was going off to the university, you're coming back here. You know that, right? You're coming back here. There's always a room for you. Come back. I remember those words very clearly. It's like, hey, I thought I can. You know, the whole world is on my feet, man. I'm going to university, you know. Uh, I'm not under scholarship, which means I'm not bound by anything. So, but I did come back. I finished my last paper at the University of Malaya on a Thursday or something like that. Packed up everything. By the weekend, I was back. And on the next Monday, I was back in the school where I studied from primary one to form six. And I was a sixth form teacher. And I was teaching geography and English, general paper, literature, subjects which I didn't study in the university, but I was deemed to be competent in things like yeah, Shakespeare the drama and literature and, and stuff theater. like that. And also, which I found out a bit later, was that I could carry on playing all these roles in theatre. Mm. And uh, there was Sansui there already as a teacher. And so I just made that group of people now who are not students anymore, but who are now at the teacher's levels. And we are now cultivating that art form. When I came into KL, after five years of teaching, um, I was still in education, but this time as an executive director of Fulbright, the Fulbright Commission, mm. Malaysian American yes. Commission on Educational Exchange. And I was still in education, but this time it's at a different level. Yeah. Finding yeah. Um, potential students, people who are doing PhD research, directing them to where they could do the research, the facilities which are available, making the connections. By the time we had more than one university. Mm. And uh, there were more and more American universities, and that was my job. American scholarship to come into Malaysia, which will be of benefit to both, especially yeah. to Malaysia. And more and more people now going beyond the first degree, going into postgraduate work and doctoral work, and this whole thing about research, doctoral research, was a new thing. Not enough people to, to supervise okay. and so forth. So in my role in Macy, that's the Fulbright Commission. Um, I, had a, I had this advantage point and personal interest in getting the people together, where the research centers are, which government department you're going mm. to go to, and get the authorizations and stuff like that to help these people do the studies. And so I followed also the academic interests and the research work which people were doing, mm -hmm. and where else, wherever I could help, I helped. That was my job. Besides looking out for accomplished, promising Malaysians and to match them with the right kind of universities in America and for the best to give them the scholarship and for others to find other means of them so that mm. they can still fulfill their dreams. I did that for quite some time and then I said I just didn't want to work anymore. I quit working for a while and left to my own devices. That's when, actually, I did the most amount of theatre. Okay. Um, I was still in my 30s, mm. and many of the roles which you would have got some of the programs for mm. were developed there, and so my... And the, there was a larger pool of people, Malaysians and so on, and there were all these expatriate people who are usually wives or husbands or whatever, yeah. or people who have got an interest in, in theatre and they started yeah. doing things. And there were also other greats, well, I think they're great people, even if people can be controversial like Donald Davis. <laughs> yeah. I won't go too much into it. Donald Davis was an old man yeah. at that time. Wonderful and, guy. And um, he lived in the Majestic Hotel, he never yeah. married. And, uh, but he had a lot of theatrical experience. He helped yeah. set up what was called the Malaysian drama 
organization, society. drama, not society, association or something like that, a loose collaboration of the existing theatre groups, which were started by the expatriates, like mm. the Theatre mm. Club and um, the Slango Philharmonic Orchestra and so on. Um, Philharmonic Society. And then, so the talent pool was increasing. Mm. They're all other professionals, they're not, they, they're not getting their living through it. So mm. nobody was a professional actor or a no, professional yeah. dancer at that time. So we all had our professions and we also had the evenings yes. where we spent it. Yeah. I was one of those kind of people at that time. And most of them are gone now. Mm. And that's another subject which we want to talk about also. So before, in fact, this project also came about because we have lost too many people without knowing what they have done. And True, and there was... Um who are the friends whom we have lost? I, I can remember the late Bosco de Cruz. Yes, he was a titan. You know? he, wow. was, he was. He was not only a tall, big-sized man, but he had that awful memory, and we all hated him for it. You give him a new script, he'll open the script, he knows which role he has been cast in, and he'll flip through the whole thing, and he has a like that, 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 and then about 15, 20 minutes later, of producing it, he knows his role. Yeah. And by the time yeah. the first rehearsal comes along, he knows his lines. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Too much. He was a, but the thing is, he was a, he, 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 he benched the marks, you know. Yeah. You yeah. want to do it? These are the steps you have to take. Absolutely. Together. I remember seeing him in some of his roles. He was fantastic. And I can't say that there are too many of those kind of people these days. They all want the nice roles. They no, want the comfort. No, they won't work on and it. And then yeah. they'll ask how much. We never asked how much. We didn't even get taxi money. Like we never. We were not paid. We were just plain amateur actors doing it for the love of it. Yes. And no. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. learning from yeah. uh, the directors, learning from people who are senior to you. I learned a lot from Bosco. One of the things is discipline. Uh, he directed me in something, and I was just about like 10 minutes late for one rehearsal. God, in front of people, he slammed me. It's a friend. I was like, Bosco, you're my friend. We've acted together. Why are you scolding me like that? I was only 10 minutes late. I didn't say that, but yeah. that was my bewilderment. But, you know, yeah. I'm supposed to be an experienced actor by that time. And so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to everyone. You learn those things which are not directly yeah. with interpretation of character and characterization of your role in the context of what the author, the playwright envisaged, which is your primary responsibility. But I learned that there are so many other things. Punctuality, keeping your word, being honest and sincere. Those are the things which nobody teaches you, but yes. you learn sometimes the hard yeah. way. A couple of knocks, then you're there. Yeah. And do you remember the late Leslie Dawson? That was another... Leslie, Leslie. Yeah. I, whenever I think of Bosco, there is Leslie, and then I must also bring in Vijaya's name. Yes, Vijaya Samara Vikrama, yes. Who actually made a career out of teaching theatre. Yes. And he started the theatre department in ITM. Mm. And he, you know, gave the Malay-speaking students and the government scholarship holders and stuff like that, oh, opened up a door to a whole new world. And so that is, these three giants I can think of, and there must have been others, like uh, Patrick Teo was what? Patrick Yeo, Clanton Boy. Yes, 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 Patrick. Patrick was one year my junior in, in the university. And he was not only so good in English, he was an English department boy, and, but he was a director himself. Yeah. So he had a number of plays, and that's when the theatre of the... I learned the theatre of the... There's such a thing called the theatre of the absurd. A whole genre, genre. which was not here. We, we didn't know yeah. about it. So these people were giants, and they are not theatre graduates of any sort. They just learned it and did it. Because at that time, Malayali theatre was a very big deal. <laughs> Bigger than Tamil theatre even. Talk about theatre uh, theater, um, students or, or graduates. The late Mustafa no comes to mind. Absolutely. Mm. I remember. That's another giant. Yeah, he had just come in and um, yeah, you were playing opposite him <laughs> yeah. in Doll's House. I directed you and him. And um, there was this, that generation of my age group, more or less, and we were all swimming in the same sea. <laughs> 
And sure. it's just too bad that we had to lose him so early. Theater, At that yeah. time, the experimental theater was up and running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I had full. So I, oh. I was producer, I was director, I was teacher, I was trainer, acting trainer. But trying to get them, like, you know, getting a degree alone is not enough. That is the easiest thing to do. Yeah. But to grow up and to develop other talents Skills. that you may have. Mm -hmm. Multimedia University was set up. And um, one of the lecturers there had heard of me and said, we got a name from MU and I know who you are. Can you come and do this as a course for us in Multimedia University? Uh, tell me, oh, is Multimedia University Cyber Jaya? What, what, there's such a thing as Cyber Jaya? <laughs> okay, so I thought that for a few years in Multimedia University. And I thought that once a week is just fine. That's, that's, that's the game I like to play. They wake up early in the morning and beat KL traffic to go to work. So, then after Multimedia University, I said, okay, I want to take a break. I think I, I, I did most of my travels around that time mm. also. So I fitted everything else to my liking like, and yes. had complete control over myself and my likes. I had no health problems, I had no wealth problems, I had no other problems. Then comes that stage where from Multimedia University, then my old classmate, good friend, who is now Dato, Doctor, Professor Sodhi Rachigan. Sodhi, yes. He was um, at the time a vice chancellor at another new university, Pradhana University, mm. and asked me to. Can I repeat that and also do this as an ancillary or part-time oh. course? So I did that at Pradhana. Then later on, Nilai University asked me to go and work with them too. So You've been traveling. Yeah, but always on my terms, like, if it is once a week, I can handle it, I said. But I'm also an experienced teacher, so you get the best of both. Yeah, of course. And I'm not on your pay scale. Mm. so. I'm not competing for any position or head of department or anything like that. Yeah. I'm just, and by that time, I think I was known enough for people to like, they really appreciated my coming in to do this. I yeah. said, yeah, one side of me, I'm a teacher's son and an academic with that ex this kind of experience. On the other hand, I'm also in the arts. And if I can combine them both and get educated university graduates who yeah. like, my classmates, my, my ilk, where it is not just the degree which is important, but it is the other things, rugby or whatever it is that your talents at that time will take you because soon you're going to get married and raise a family and all this will go. Yeah, being able to speak, being able to just make conversation, to mm -hmm. think on your feet and trust someone, be able to do stuff together, that's all theatre. I just don't want to fill in a slot and sell my name for it. So, I'm in that advantageous position. Actually, I'm in a position where I didn't plan to be, but it's the thing. I do what I want, when I want, with yes. whom I want, as I long as some people down the line benefit from it. And That's you didn't not. let life take over. You, you led that life, yeah. I don't owe Sounds. anybody any money. I haven't borrowed any money. So, I don't have a wealth, health, or any other problems, and I'm still functioning. And the next part also delete. I'm in. A, I'm probably paragliding on my own somewhere, you know, <laughs> using the drift of the wind and looking at the terrain and, and land where go. I want, <gasps> when I want. And someone says that, hey, you left the flight plan. Put up. Where you got a flight plan? <laughs> I bet you didn't know this but there's more to come in the next episodes.